So what we're gonna do here is um, take this prepared heat sink, which has all the holes according to the pattern um, on the PCB cut out and also tapped with 1032 um, thread so that we can uh, screw all the components onto the heat sink. Uh, the easiest way to um, uh, do the template on the heat sink is just to before you mount any components uh, onto the power PCB, just put the uh, PCB on top of the heat sink and just circle the um, uh, the right holes, and then drill and tap. So what we're going to do here is we are going to first prepare the thermistor, which is this little thing. Uh, cut out most of the legs here, and then this will go. This will get connected to um, this little um, harness here, which is a 3-pin uh, polar loop connector. I think we refer to that in our uh, build notes. Um, polar loop, P-O-L-O-L-U.com is the best source for those things. And it's really convenient to um, mount things to the uh, uh, 0.1 inch um, pitch headings. So we got about six inches of wire here. Uh, what we're gonna do is twist it tightly, which is a good idea for all the connections in this charger because of the, um, the noise levels from the high power components. Then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take um, this piece of um, heat shrink tubing and put it on these wires. Another one. In the wires. And now we're gonna connect this thermistor onto the wires. It's good to separate the legs a little bit of uh, the thermistor so that it mounts easier. And then what we're gonna do is uh, put a little solder on it and then just solder it to this wires here. One. And there's some trickery here on the um, on the second leg, but uh, it can be done. If you have the proper station with the holders and everything, this could be actually easier. And we're just, I'm just too lazy here. All right, so. It's connected, slide over the hit tubing. Then what you do, take the next size hitch ring, and um, actually we are going to um, hit this up a little bit with the um, with the gun. Okay, that's good. And now we put a little piece of the larger hitch ring tubing on top of this connection here. Just make sure you don't have um, the legs of the thermistor touching each other in any way so there is no contact. And then slide this over almost uh, to the end so until the head of the thermistor almost appears uh, out of this and then let's apply some heat. Okay, so that's our thermistor assembly. Uh, it goes into the middle of heat sink right here. The uh, position of this particular hole is not super critical, but ideally it's in the middle. Right? So to affix this to uh, inside that hole, we're gonna use some silicon um, uh, caulk, which is something you can buy from Home Depot. It's a uh, silicon weatherproofing. So now, after what we uh, what we did with the heat sink, uh, prepare the heat sink. What we're going to do is we are going to uh, mount the power board to the heat sink. So here it's shown mounted already. So on the power board, you have uh, all the components placed already. Some of the wiring is placed um, already on the power board. The um, uh, 12 volt uh, supply is here as well. Um, it's affixed to the uh, to the board with the silicon caulk as well, and so there is a driver board that you can see here for the PFC unit, which is uh, this one. Uh, the uh, 
driver board components are facing outside of the board, of the power board. And there's some connections made to the power board uh, for voltage readout and the current readout. So to mount the uh, uh, assembled power board to the heatsink, you need to use the thermal grease um, between the, uh, the thermal compound uh, between all the surfaces, right? So um, and you have to apply it to the IGBTs and the uh, diode bridges uh, here as well. So those two things, and then you use the uh, or we use the uh, three-inch long uh, machine screws, uh, Phillips uh, machine screws, to um, affix everything to the um, to the heatsink. Um, uh, they're adequate lengths, just uh, just enough to uh, go through the um, most of the heatsink, but not stake out too much. And you want to use the lock washers and um, washers. Uh, careful of the size of the um, uh, washers on the um, bridge board, so that, uh, the washers don't short anything. Um, just try to apply. Look at uh, look at where they are relative to the uh, PCB traces or uh, field areas, and make sure that they don't short anything. And then um, what we do is we pre-place all the screws into the IGBTs and the um, uh, bridge boards and then just lower the whole thing onto the heatsink. Um, look at the positioning of the screws so they go right in and then you screw everything together um, one by one first uh, just softly so that they go into the positions and then you tighten them up in the circular pattern. Okay, so now let's talk about the enclosure. So this is an example of the EMW charger enclosure. These are two sides to it. They go together like that. Um, so we're going to remove the top part because um, we're not going to do much with it. Everything is done to the bottom part of the enclosure. Um, and what's really convenient about this is that uh, you have full access from the sides to um, everything that you do. Um, the fans go on this side. Um, they're shown here already mounted. Um, if you order enclosure from us, they will come with your enclosure and with grills so that you can use um, the number 10 metal uh, sheet metal screws um, about half inch long to uh, mount everything together. Um, then the fans are connected in parallel here and then what we do here is we solder about six inches um, of um, black and red wire um, to the um, header here, one of the Pololu headers, again, uh, P-O-L-O-L-U.com is um, a great little company that builds these pre-crimped wires and the headers. And this will go onto the um, control board. The control board has this um, small three pin uh, power header which we're gonna use. So we're gonna connect this to the plus 12 and ground on this. So the fans will be on every time the AC uh, is connected, which is a, an acceptable um, uh, shortcut for us because uh, normally AC will not be connected to your car and the fans will be off. But when you charge, the fans will be on automatically. The other option is to connect them to the uh, um, appropriate place in the control board that does the uh, fan uh, control, but um, that's a little bit more complicated and a little bit more debugging if anything goes wrong, so we just uh, normally connect this to the plus 12 volt supply. Um, as you see here, on the back of the enclosure, um, here, there is a grill for out, uh, to let the air out. So everything is pre-cut and everything is ready for mount. This uh, little um, space here is to um, mount the uh, control board and um, already pre-cut are places for all the buttons and the LCDs. So you don't have to do any cutting. This will save you about 10 hours uh, of metal working. And um, if you don't exactly know what you're doing, it's not a lot of fun. And it requires some specialized uh, tools uh, to cut all these things through. So um, just uh, just get a machine that will uh, decide to get enclosure at all. Okay, so the next thing we do is we're gonna mount the um, heatsink 
onto this enclosure. And you see here, we already drilled a couple of holes uh, in the enclosure here. Um, they don't come pre-drilled because you have to drill the heat sink first um, and then measure the distance um, for the heat sink and drain, drill the matching holes here. So we already have done that and what we're going to do now is we're going to put through some bolts. Uh, we're going to use the 1024 bolts and the um, uh, lock nuts so that Hit, uh, hit sink does not unscrew itself uh, due to vibration and whatnot. So this is a combination that we're going to use. These are some 4 inch bolts, 10, 24. Um, ideally, actually, the bolts would be 3.5 inch long. These are the ones that we have. They will work as well, but ideally, um, 3.5 would work the best. There are some wide washers um, that we're going to use on the bottom of these. So. Just like this. I'm gonna thread these things through the holes here, like that. These are nylon nylon nuts, lock nuts that we're gonna use on top. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to lower the heat sink onto these bolts, and the way the holes are cut is so that. The heat sink mounts flush to the fans. Um, that's actually preferential uh, because then you get the best airflow through the heat sink. This is the mounting orientation that is preferred. So this wires here would go through the grill and outside, and then would mount or would get connected to the um, uh, to the output connector. So it's a little bit uh, tricky here with all the uh, all the wires and everything, but it's doable. Cool. Um, these are pretty thick wires, so we will have to um, put them through the um, uh, the enclosure before we actually can lower the heat sink. And we might need to cut them here so that we can actually separate those. Okay, that goes through. Put the bolts in between the right fins. Okay, so everything is going in as planned. Okay, it is through now. Okay, and the bolts are vertical, and the heat sink is virtually flush to the uh, to the fans. So exactly what we want to do. Exactly what we want to do. So now we just fasten the um, the heat sink to the enclosure. The nylon nuts, a little bit tough, but uh, yeah, it's doable. So, in terms of the sequence, you could mount the heatsink before you mount the um, um, you mount the power board onto it. Uh, we tried both ways. It's actually a little bit more complicated because you need to apply the thermal grease and you need to actually see where you your um, your bolts go uh, that mounts the power board to the heatsink. So it actually might be a little bit more complicated than that. So this is the easiest procedure that we found, okay? So now we're gonna just tighten these things. So here the heat sink is completely mounted and everything is pretty solid. So you can turn things around and nothing happens. So that's good, that's good. Things are a little bit tight and uh, between the driver board and the wall here. And we're also going to be mounting the control board here and all that. So you're going to be doing quite a bit of work uh, in this area. It's okay to just uh, bend this a little bit outwards. It will uh, then spring back when you will be um, uh, screwing everything together. So the next thing to do is to mount the control board. Uh, the way to do it is um, you use uh, about one inch, or we use rather, and you're welcome to as well. We use a, about one inch, one to one and a half, 832 uh, machine screws, 
with some uh, spacers. Uh, specifically, we use the uh, 3 8 um, of an inch uh, uh, nylon spacers. Uh, let's just do that. So these are the supplies that we're going to use. This is a fully assembled control board. Both sides. It's got an LCD between these two buttons. Um, and this is the uh, programming bat button here. You know, you would press it when um, uh, you want to program the charger. And these are some bolts that we talked about just a minute ago. So you put some washers, thread them through. They pretty, go pretty tight, which actually helps uh, the assembly. You might um, want to just put them through just halfway for now. As I mentioned, things will be a little bit tight, on, especially on the bottom here. So then we put the uh, spacers on all four. So it is a little bit tricky. Okay, that's done. On the top two as well. Okay. And then the control board goes in like this. So, see, like that, and it goes in like that. Lower it down, match the holes on the bottom, and now push through the bottom screws all the way. So they hold on to the board. Okay, that's done. Now the top. One and two. Okay, so you're almost done with that. We use the lock nuts here, um, a little bit less aggressive variety um, compared to the nylon nuts. This is um, just some uh, tooth washer on the back. Okay, and now we're going to use them to secure the board to the enclosure. I could start from the top. It's easier and actually will help um, hold the board while you're finishing the rest quite a bit. Okay, don't screw with the full force because we'll also need to adjust some of the positions as well. Might use uh, your pliers, small pliers, to uh, hold some of the nuts uh, as again things are tight. So, this is how it looks on the other side. So this is the uh, screen mounted in correct orientation with the buttons and everything. Just might look um, at it a little bit to make sure that it's mounted, um, that all the clearances around the um, buttons are um, correct, uh, roughly symmetrical, and then just fasten the, uh, the bolts to um, some good torque. Okay, okay. so now it's, um, the control board is mounted. And again, there is not too much space between these two, but that's actually um, that's actually good uh, for the connection and noise immunity. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to wire the connections between the driver board and the uh, control board. Uh, again, we're going to use a bunch of Paulu connectors. Um, love those guys. And the first one we're going to do is the current uh, connector from the power board to the control board. So this is 12 inches worth of um, pre-crimped wires, female, female, um, red for plus five, black for ground, and uh, white for signal. And where it goes is here. This is the connector uh, for the current uh, measurement from the uh, power board. So we're going to use a three pin uh, header, female header. And so the first one that goes in is ground, black. The second one is plus 5 volts. Uh, it's all marked on the power board. That's where I'm looking right now. And the third one is marked C, which is current output, which is a signal, a white wire. As with everything, screw, um, twist the wires tightly. 
It's actually relatively easy to do on these thin bars. Yep. So on the ends, they will go not into the three pin connector, but into a six pin connector like this. The reason is that they go onto a six pin header on this side of the board. And um, it's basically the same sequence um, and starts from the bottom of this header and goes ground or black, goes in first. Plus five goes second, and the signal goes third, and then the rest of the spaces here will be used for the voltage measurement. The voltage measurement is taken from the driver board, and it's close to the control board, so the wires we will use will be shorter. Specifically, those will be six inch polar wires. And uh, if you look at the markings on the control board, the way it goes is we have the ground first. I'm going to use blue for that. So out of black on the six inches. Blue. Then there is a marking called MV. This is mains voltage. We are going to use white wire for that. And there is a marking named V, which is the battery voltage or just voltage. And we're going to use a gray wire for that. Nothing special about the colors, just uh, make sure they're different because you're going to twist them, and if they're not different, then you're going to lose them. Okay, twist. So this one is twisted separately from the 12 inch wires that we just had for current measurement. And what these go into? is a three pin connector that will connect to the driver board. Now look at the driver board and see how the markings are there. They're different from the control board and it tripped up quite a few builders actually. So the ground is on the top of this connector. So blue one goes on the top of the connector. The next one down is V out, which is um, the V output, which was here we put a gray wire onto the V output. So we need to put gray wire next into this connector. And then the only space left is for white wire and that's what we're going to do here. So if you compare these two you will see that the sequence is different on this connector versus this connector. Alright, so now we have this uh, connector complete and it goes into the board, into the control board here on the bottom. There's a six pin header that you soldered earlier. So you press it on and then this guy goes to the um, driver board onto a top vertical connector like that. Six inches is just perfect for that. This wire goes onto the uh, current readout and just make sure you use the right um, alignment so the ground goes to ground and all that it helps uh, in this case is to have a convention that ground is always black and um, your voltage supply is always red and signal is something else so you don't have to be tracing the wires all day alright so this cable is done the next cable to do is the PWM cable this is what takes the uh, PWM signal from the uh, control board into the driver board. And if you again look at the control board, uh, this connector here on top, it says plus 12 volt in, old out, and ground in. So it starts with plus 12. We're going to use the red wire for that. So red wire goes to the top of this guy. Then there is a signal, old out. Um, this is a signal, this is an actual PWM signal going out. We're going to use yellow for that. And then the last one is ground. We're going to use black. Okay, what do we do now? Right, twist. Twist tightly. Every wire, multi wire connector, and if it just uses two wires, it has to be twisted tightly. 
Okay. On the other end, this connector goes into the driver board. This is the um, or, uh, one of the horizontal connectors, and actually the sequence there is the same <clears throat> as on the control board for the same thing. So the uh, plus 12 goes first, followed by the signal, followed by the ground. Okay, so now we're ready to connect it. Make sure you have the right orientation. Plug it into control board. Plug it into driver board. Okay, we're done with these guys. The next one we're going to do is the power connection. So the power, the 12 volt power, enters the system at the driver board. There is a separate connector for it. It's got uh, three positions, but only two are used. The ones on the uh, sides of this three pin connector, there's red and blue that we used, blue is ground, red is, or rather it's brown, uh, is plus. So it will go in like that. And here we um, cut it off because it will connect to the output of this um, voltage regular or other AC, uh, universal AC supply. Um, you will get the supply in a um, uh, typical wall wart box. Uh, what we do is we disassemble the box, we discard the box, we take out the PCB and just mount it on top of the caps here. That way actually the cooling is better for the supply and if anything goes wrong you see it right away and you don't have to you know, mess around with uh, figuring out how to connect the wall supply um, and mount it in here. Okay. So we're going to strip these two wires. If it shrink is our friend, two pieces. We're going to again twist the wire. Put some heat shrink on top and solder it together to these wires. Okay. Okay, so that soldering is done. We now take this and connect it to the driver board. Route it somehow and then plug it in. Oh, there it's getting a little bit crowded, but not bad. And twisted wires do help to make sense of all this, uh, all these connections. All right, so the only thing that we have not connected yet is the uh, thermistor, which uh, its tail is sticking out here if you can see. Um, by now the paste is probably all um, solidified so we can actually connect it. Um, the way it goes in is on the bottom of the control board or close to the bottom to the left of the Arduino chip and you might want to reference the uh, control board again um, I'm using this uh, spare board, but you can use the um, you can easily use the schematic or, or PC or other PCB layout uh, for this. Um, on this board, it actually gives uh, all the um, uh, markings here. So there are two markings that you care about uh, on this connector here: is temp and ground. And the connector reads the entire connector is plus five UVLO ground T2 and temp. So temp and ground are the ones that you're going to use. So this three-pin header that we've prepared with the thermistor goes between the ground and temp. Again, you can bend uh, the enclosure a little bit so that you can put it in, but it is getting a little bit more difficult to do. Uh, so not the end of the world. That's a small price to pay for the power density that you get with this system, right? So you can see by now that we tried quite hard to make sure that we can get maximum amount of power off uh, every unit of space uh, in this design. Okay, well actually the last one that we're going to plug in is this header here that we prepared for the fans. And it goes on to another difficult to access header. Just make sure that you put um, the red wire onto the 12 and the ground or the black wire onto the ground so your fans work. OK. 
Okay. A little bit of uh, acrobatics, and we are going to be done with this one. Okay, that's good. Alright, so this side is complete. So actually, you could be ready to uh, power up your logic now and uh, check how it works. Uh, to do that, you would need to power up this little supply, uh, the AC supply, with 110 volts or 240. It's a universal supply. It will take whatever, but probably easier to wire uh, 110 and see what happens. So if you take things slow, as we suggest, I would actually do that first and see what happens um, on the LCD, if um, the wiring is correct, is everything going uh, well. Um, the worst that can happen is you will burn some of the um, uh, 12 volt components, um, which is not a big deal. Um, it's annoying, but um, it's not going to kill you. If you miswire something on the um, big board and connect uh, the power right away, this, the things could be worse. Okay, so we are going to try to power the control system now. One other thing before um, you can power it up actually is um, programming the Arduino. So what you can do is to take that chip out, the blue board out, or you can build this little uh, programming cable um, that you can plug in into the header that right next to the Arduino and then you can use it at any, any time without having to um, take out the chip. That's exactly what we're going to do. We use 12 uh, inches of uh, again, Pololu wires uh, with a six pin uh, female uh, headers on both ends and they're just identically wired uh, together. So colors are not particularly important, but I recommend using green wire on one end and black wire on another end. So that's how um, all the Arduino programming, um, like FTDI uh, tools, are marked, and that will make your life easier. Okay, so we'll uh, connect this one next to the header um, on this side of the board. And again, refer to the board how to connect. Black one goes up. So it goes like this, and make sure you, uh, the connector actually has eight positions uh, with two top positions reserved for the buttons, um, which you don't need to use right now. So make sure that it goes to the bottom six positions. And then somehow route it so it's out of the way. You will not use it too frequently. Or maybe you will, uh, depending on how adventurous you want to get with this kit. Um, and let's just uh, put it on the side here. So you can use this now to uh, program uh, the system. When you program, you will have to make sure that the um, LCD is disconnected from, um, from the circuit. The way to do it is with this black button. So you press once it's a toggle button so you need to um, uh, put it into the off position uh, which is um, a position when it sticks out a little bit more so we put it in off position so now LCD power is disconnected from the main power and we can actually program it so next thing we're going to do we are going to program the Arduino with our PC here so we uh, just use the um, FTDI cable that um, uh, came with your kit, come with your kit, um, with a little bit of uh, trickery here. So uh, both FTDI connector and the connector that we just built here are female connectors. So we use a um, six pin header. Um, to uh, interface the two. We just pulled pins a little bit so that the uh, plastic um, uh, holder here is in the middle. So we put it in here and then we'll connect it to, uh, to this header. Now you want to make sure that you, um, you connect it in the right way. So there are markings on the FTDI chip um, and the one that you're looking for is ground. It's on one of the sides of the chip and it should be connecting to the black black wire position so that's why you use black and green wires so that's what you're going to do now 
connected together. Uh, we are now going to see if we can compile and upload the um, sketch that you can download from um, our site. Uh, we are using development version. Now, depending on the uh, board, uh, on the driver board that you get, and on the version of the kit, PFC or non-PFC, you might need to um, turn on and off some switches in the code. On the top of the code, there is a, um, an area that's called main switches. Uh, that has a bunch of define uh, statements. Uh, things like define drop 110 power, define hull 150 or 100U, and so forth. So this kit, or this charger, as uh, all the kits uh, that are shipped now, uh, is using 100 amp um, unidirectional hull sensor. So you want to make sure that um, you have a statement define hull 100 u uncommented and all the other uh, hull um, define statements commented out. Then you're looking for things like um, define PFC, uh, which is this a PFC unit. We are going to uncommence that. Uh, we're going to say define PFC so that uh, the software knows that it's a PFC unit then this particular board uses a, a small white um, A7520 chip to sense the voltage from the battery. Most of the non-PFC kits will actually be coming out by, uh, with that by default. Some of the PFC kits might be coming out with that by, uh, as well. And this will, be, uh, this will be obvious from the way the, um, the, the board looks. And so there is a uh, uh, separate PCB file on our site uh, to cover just that. So this one actually does have the A7520 uh, chip measuring the battery voltage so we are going to uncommence um, uh, the line that says uh, pound define or hash define A7520 underscore V. We're going to uncomment that. Uh, so now we seem to be done. We're going to save, uh, save the sketch, compile it, Make sure that we have the right serial port uh, set and the right target, uh, Arduino target set as well. So when you go to the tools menu under board, uh, you should see Arduino Pro Mini, 5 volts, 16 megahertz with a Tmega328 uh, selected. If you don't, uh, please select it, otherwise the code will not work on this board. Uh, serial port uh, will we'll just have to be the one that um, your machine recognizes as uh, the port allocated to this FTDI uh, cable when you plug it in. Alright, so everything seems to be okay. Now we are going to try to upload. Okay, I'm going to hit upload and watch the, um, uh, watch the FTDI board here. It started flashing, so that means that the serial communication is on and it moves data from the computer to the board. Just going to do, uh, do it for a couple of seconds. Now it stopped, and my computer says it's done uploading. So you are ready to go with your Arduino. We're going to unplug the system here. Let the programming cable lay somewhere here. And what we can do now, uh, we can actually power it up. Um, one way you can power it up in a partial way is uh, through the same FTDI cable actually. So if you press this button again, the LCD button, um, so turn on the LCD and now connect your, uh, your power cable. Again, look at the orientation. Uh, black goes to the ground. Plug it in. And see what happens with the screen. 
So this is exactly what should happen. Your screen, your uh, charger uh, detected that it's running for the first time. So it went automatically into the setup mode. And it asks you what kind of battery you're using. Um, the first choice is the lithium iron phosphate or lithium ion, lithium ion actually, and any lithium ion will do. So you press yes, it remembers that. Next, it asks you for the CV cutoff voltage. The default that's programmed in the code is three volts, which is too low. We're gonna go and make it 3.5 volts. Um, so the screen reads 350, 350. That means 3.5 volts. I'm gonna click through, confirm. Next, it asks number of cells. So we are going to test this particular charger with our um, bank of cells here. That is uh, 98 cells in total in series. So we're gonna just program it to 98 cells. The way it works, um, you uh, program each number separately and you use red button to cycle through things and green button to confirm. Okay, we're done. Now it asks about capacity. So capacity is 100 amp hours that we're gonna use. So we're gonna say 100 amp hours. Next thing it does is asking you to short output and press any button. The purpose of this is to calibrate your sensor to zero. Um, because we did not apply any power uh, to, the, uh, to the main section of the charger, you might think that um, the voltage on the output is actually zero. It might not be that case because of some leakages uh, through the parasitic uh, resistances and capacitances and, and so forth. So what I would do here, I would actually, if you want to calibrate right now, I would short the output. Um, it's perfectly okay to just uh, kind of press this button for now and realize that you will need to recalibrate later. You, later. you can always recalibrate later by um, uh, pressing any button during the initial five second startup of the charger. So we're just gonna pass through here. We're gonna confirm. Um, that we have um, 98 cells, 100 amp hours. The next screen here is the screen that you will see every time you run the charger. It is um, setting the parameters of the run. So the first one is input current. We're gonna set it to something relatively large, like 80, 81 amps. Next one is output current. We're gonna start with, oops, not 200 amps. We're gonna start at 21 amps. Confirm. So now it's ready to run. You can try to see and click things through. Um, it will try to start the run. Of course, there is no there's no battery connected, there's no AC connected, there is no BMS connected, so it really cannot run. So um, that concludes this part of the test and everything works fine. Everything works as expected. The next thing to do is to actually power up the uh, 12 volt uh, circuitry and go through the calibration once again. And then um, if that passes through, then we are going to um, uh, continue with the build. Um, we're still missing the inductors, as you can see on this side. Uh, once we wire those things up, uh, we can actually power up the whole thing. Before we can actually run the charger uh, with full power, we need to uh, build a BMS dongle um, that uh, will be used to connect the BMS or just um, uh, emulate the BMS, which is required to get the charger to run. What, you, what we use here is, again, 12-inch Polo cables, um, blue, orange, brown, green, and gray. 
uh, for no particular reason, uh, the colors, but just uh, what we're used to using here. And the five pin uh, headers on both sides of this thing. So we're gonna just um, use those to plug them in here. Blue or purple. Orange, brown, green, and gray. Then twist the wires. Again, it's very easy to do with this uh, thin wires. Even six of them or five of them at a time. Okay. Um, absolutely the same layout here, so you might want to bring the, um, the other tail for reference. So again, blue, orange. Brown, gray, oh no, green, and gray. Okay, see how fast it is, beats uh, soldering things together. All right, so then the way you put it in is, okay, on this control board, the Arduino is here, the BMS connector is here. It's um, oriented towards me on this board. So that's where I'm going to put it in. And the blue wire goes closest to Arduino. Uh, that's just a convention that we have here. Okay, so that's done. Uh, what you want to do in order to be able to run the charger is actually short or connect together the uh, blue and orange wires which is a BMS wire and end of charge wire. This is specified in the build notes and in the manual. Uh, we are just going to use one of the uh, legs of uh, the resistors that we uh, we mounted to things before to just uh, short this build a little improv jumper. So there you go. Okay. So this thing will command the charger to turn on. Okay, so now we are done with the wiring. Um, we just need to uh, do a couple of uh, couple of things. Uh, connect these wires to the 110 supply so that we can power up with 12 volts. So here we've connected this uh, power supply to the 110 uh, uh, plug that we have uh, just lying around the shop here. Um, so we're going to put some electrical tape here so that we don't short anything. This is a temporary connection so don't go uh, crazy on this one. Okay, so this is uh, sufficient. Alright, so what we're going to do now is power this up and see what happens. So we powered it up, nothing burned, which is um, always a good sign. So now we took this um, 110 or um, AC lines going into this adapter and soldered it to the output of the, or rather the input from the bridge, from the AC bridge as it enters the power board. There are a few places where you can do it, but basically you're, um, you, you want to connect this, um, this adapter to um, rectified um, AC. Right, and it's actually okay for it. It's got a rectifier right up front anyway, so it's not going to hurt it. So you connect um, in whatever order these wires doesn't matter uh, to plus and minus uh, input to the board. Okay, so now we are wired for AC. The only thing that's missing in this charger is the inductors, which is our next mini project, uh, mounting the two inductors here and then we are going to be all set to apply full power. Okay, so um, now here we have the inductors uh, mounted to the uh, enclosure here. 
and I'm going to show a little bit closer how these mounts together. Okay, through this grill, you see that um, there are these C brackets that go through the um, um, that basically brace the uh, cores um, and connect them to the bottom of the enclosure. You see these bolts here that go through the um, through the brackets and they compress the bracket and together with it uh, they press down on the inductor and it's pretty sturdy, it's um, holding up pretty well. Um, now between the uh, bracket and the bottom of the enclosure there is a little piece of rubber um, I don't know if you can see it there but uh, it's there, it's under the inductor, it's basically not uh, there to not let the um, uh, turns of wire short to the enclosure itself. Um, it goes again. It goes um, uh, on top of the bottom of the enclosure, and then the uh, inductor, together with the C bracket, goes on top of it, and then the bolts go through the enclosure and mounts the inductor. Okay, so the charger is now completely wired together. So the inductors go to um, uh, this is the uh, output stage inductor. It goes to the top of the uh, IGBT and to the inductor pickup here. The PFC inductor is this one. Um, it goes to the top of the PFC IGBT and to the inductor pickup uh, on the board here. This is a pickup for the inductor. Um, then we also wired, uh, put a little connector. This is a 50, 50 amp rated co connector um, um, that should be sufficient for our purposes. Um, this is going to be once we uh, mount everything together, we are going to mount the uh, connector to the uh, enclosure as well. So, with some uh, sheet metal screws. So, this is it, folks. Um, this is pretty much a completely assembled uh, charger. We are going to start testing the complete unit next uh, with some AC power applied. So what we did here is we connected some uh, output wiring to the charger. This is the uh, Anderson connector that will go to the battery. Observe the polarity as you connect the charger because reverse polarity will kill it and it will be pretty spectacular. The other connector here is the um, gray connector, also Anderson connector, 50 amp. Um, it will go to the AC. Or, uh, as we're going to use it now, we are just going to connect a 12 volt supply, make sure that everything is um, connected correctly. Okay, so let's just do that. Uh, we're taking our 12 volt supply and connecting to this 12 uh, to this uh, input AC connector. What we're also going to do is connect this uh, clamp amp meter on the input line to uh, measure the input current to make sure there is no short circuit. We're going to set it into DC. Okay, it's set in the DC. Let's zero it out. It says zero. We're going to clamp it onto the input line right here. And I'm gonna see what happens. Okay, zero it out. Can't see it, but uh, outside of the screen, I have a 12 volt uh, supply that I'm gonna plug into the AC line now. Okay, it says 0.6 amps, which is the draw of the uh, power supply that you see here. This power supply here, um, which is totally fine. So there is no short circuits or anything, otherwise I would see tens of amps going into um, the charger. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to apply 60 volts uh, to it. So by this time, I need to put on my safety glasses and you have to do the same thing too. 
because when you start getting into the AC voltage and hundreds of volts, uh, things might happen that you don't want uh, to happen in your face. The caps might explode and it's not a pretty sight. So let's uh, turn the music down. So this is a uh, 100 volt supply right here that we're going to use and this is an AC cord. So I'm going to connect the two now. Okay, 0.4 amps. That's the read, so which is about 50 watts. It's a little bit high. Let's disconnect it. See what it says here. Well, it's actually the meter is off, so we're going to reset it again. And reset it one more time. Connect it. Okay, it's uh, 60 milliamps right now. But what's more important is if you look at the uh, LCD here, it so actually parted on with AC. We see that the PFC is working. 370 volts or so. So now we're going to go through the calibration one more time. We're going to keep the uh, settings on the battery. Get to the point where it asks us short output and press any button. So before we short output, what do we want to do? Is we want to actually measure the output and see, make sure that there is no significant voltage on the output. Sometimes we have a situation when the control board would output some voltage on the um, PWM control pin and the IGBT would be turned all the way on and would pass the full PFC voltage to the output. Shorting the output in that situation is not fun. So let's see, uh, let's see what the output actually reads like. Okay, the output is 6.8 volts, which is actually looks like a leakage output from the um, uh, from the gate supply. So we are going to short it now. Well, we're going to actually connect a low resistance resistor to the output so that we dissipate the charge and let's see what kind of voltage we're getting now after we did that we get 0.7 volts and rising so we can actually short the output and this might seem uh, a little bit too much precaution but um, Really, when you work with that kind of uh, voltage levels and um, these many capacitors, um, pays to be a little bit cautious. So here's what we did. We have a little rig here that is just a shorted um, Anderson connector. So now we know that there is zero volts on the output. We press the button saying that yes, we shorted the output. It calibrated zero. Now it wants us to connect the battery to it. So connection of the battery to the system here is a little bit tricky because there is zero voltage there and um, we don't want huge inrush currents. So what uh, we have here is another jig which is this. Two Anderson connectors with some uh, inrush resistors in line. What we're going to do is we're going to connect the charger to it here and then we're going to connect our 100 volt battery here and then the charger should recognize the battery being connected and then ask us if it read the voltage correctly so let's connect it I'm connecting it off the screen here it is now connected to the battery the charger says it reads 98 volts 
on the uh, LCD and it prompts us to enter the correct voltage. So what we're going to do is we are going to measure that voltage. And it says 97.1. So I'm going to say that I see 97 volts instead of 98. Okay. And that completes the calibration. Okay, so let's now try um, bypassing all those parameters and try charging it. the 100 volt battery. Okay, it works perfectly. 4.7 amps into 99 volt battery. Okay, that's good. Let's try connecting the real battery. 98 cells.